Good evening. Tonight's show will pull no punches. Three of the greatest names in heavyweight boxing will be with us before you can say, no, I mean, Harry. We'll be hearing from the Glaswegian band, His Latest Flame, and I'll be meeting up with an old friend. Well, perhaps I shouldn't say old, because he looks the same as he did 20 years ago. His latest work will be seen on BBC television at the end of the month. He is, of course, David McCallum. Now, one of my first guests was once known as the most frightening man in the world. In his youth, he was often in trouble with the police, but under expert guidance, was able to channel that aggression into boxing. He did it to such good effect that in 1973, he challenged Joe Frazier successfully for the heavyweight championship of the world. <laughs> Next to him sits a man who reigned as world champion from 1970 to 1973, although assessing his early potential, his coach was heard to comment, he couldn't jump rope, he couldn't hit the bag, he couldn't do anything except bang. In 1964, he won an Olympic gold medal, and in 1970 secured the heavyweight title when he beat James Ellis in fine style. And we're in round four, and there's about 15 seconds to go. Here's the chance for Frazier to finish it. And he's got it with a wide left. And the count will... Please welcome Joe Frazier. <laughs> finally, finally, a man whose career saw him compete in 61 fights, winning 56 of them. He, too, is an Olympic gold medalist. He won the heavy, heavyweight championship of the world no less than three times. The first victory was against Sonny Liston in 1964. And 10 years later, he fought George Foreman to regain his crown. Even fight. Ali, a sneaky right hand. Another sneaky right hand. This time he works over the shoulder of Foreman. Many remember him as Cassius Clay, the Louisville lip. But to most, he is simply the greatest. Ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad Ali. Welcome. Well, George, here you are all sitting down, friends. Was it always the way when you were contenders for that heavyweight championship? I didn't think so. Uh, how would you be friendly with a fellow who knocks you down with a straight right hand and another one who barely miss you with a left hook that almost take your neck off? Joe <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> Joe, did you ever hurt each other? How, do, how could you be friends with a guy who knocked you down <laughs> seven times in the first fight, uh, six times down in the last fight, and every now and then you talk with me, he say, I want you to be quiet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you really have to be quiet. I think it was some fantastic fights that we had within the years that went by. If we could do it all again, I would. Oh. They asked me when Muhammad Ali took the title from me, did he hurt me? And there I am with a big black eye. <laughs> eye swollen up, and they asked me, did it hurt? Now, Ali. So I think the press did more damage than anything. Oh, well, you fought these guys, Ali, and you've got a face as pretty as a picture. How'd you keep your pretty Boo. face? Yeah. Boo. <laughs> How do you keep that pretty face? Uh, <laughs> it's the prettiest face in the world. Now, George, you're just about to make a comeback, but when you were retired from boxing for a bit, what did you do in that time? Well, I, I raised children mostly. I tried to retire on a, on a farm, but all I was raising was dirt. <laughs> so I started raising a lot of children. I'm a full-time preacher, of course. Tell me how you became a preacher. Well, it was pretty easy. I think the last fellow I fought was uh, uh, Jimmy Young. He whipped the devil out of me. And then after that, you decided to become a preacher, take up the ministry? Well, yeah, and, and, and that's why today we travel around the country to, to acquaint people with us other than boxing. The Champions Forever Tour is about the world seeing a video of us, Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, and myself, Kenny Norton, as people other than boxers. Right. So our life stories are compact in it. Right. And, I, and you, we can't tell you everything now no, you want by the video. Yeah. That's right. 
Joe, you also retired 10 years ago, but you haven't been away from boxing. What do you, what do, you do? Well, I, I did uh, made a start back. Uh, somehow I fought a guy to a draw, and my kids didn't like the way how I look out. I come out after the draw. So they said, Dad, you better hang it up. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did, right now I have a uh, young man in the gym I'm working with for the newly, let's say, game coming up, uh, the Olympic game. So therefore, that uh, these young men are working pretty hard. My sons and Bert and Tommy, these guys are promoters now. So if I'm just helping the young men, let's say they go to be fine men, you know what I mean? And whatever people like to see me, I go around and promote and now we're promoting champions forever. It's just a lot of fun, that's all. Most of us, at least people like me, who aren't in the boxing fraternity because I'm just not quite big enough, no. most of us think of boxing as the film Rocky. Now, was Rocky true to life? Is a lot of that training? We think that the film Rocky was based on Joe Frazier's life. You see, Rocky... And, was, and Muhammad. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. It, and so yeah. it was a, a recreation of some of the exploits they had. He was running down the street in Joe Frazier's old neighborhood. Joe Frazier was, was actually... Worked sure. in a butcher shop or meat yeah. house. And, and did Stallone come to you for any tips or anything, or did he keep away and just... Uh... Well, Rock, Rock Hughes is pretty clever. Uh, let's say doing the, the second uh, uh, film that he cut, uh, he came into Philadelphia. Matter of fact, I think he took you. No, I never did meet him. No, no. no. Yeah. Never he did. took uh, Muhammad, he took, uh, let's say, uh, Larry, all these guys that knew to Los Angeles for a screen uh, test. It wasn't on the basis of a screen test. He just had wanted to learn more about us, about what fighting was all about. He's clever. Yeah. And uh, he took all of those pieces that we did on the screen test, and he put his film together. Yeah. He didn't pay it. Didn't pay <laughs> He didn't pay it. Oh, you were that too, right? I go. Ali, you're the greatest. How are you the greatest champion in the world? <coughs> that was only publicity. Oh. Saying I'm the greatest, just to build the fight. I never really believed that. You didn't believe it? Still don't. I believed it. Of course, he fought He's all the greatest the, man. Yeah, he fought all, all the champions. Uh, he fought brother, everybody was there. My brother got back Joe Frazier's face. <laughs> <laughs> Real close. I mean, nobody's that great. You beat these two guys. You beat that guy. Close. Those. <laughs> you, that, you ain't beat this guy. She's agitated. You beat this guy. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to make me mad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all, it's all was more like, like fun, but uh, we, all, we all fought Muhammad. She's I mean, everybody did. It's right on down the line, 40. I'm getting mad now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> George, she, you, she probably have a strong husband. You better watch it, okay? <laughs> but Ali did it by, by poems. He used to wind people up by poems and by talking, the Louisville lip. He used to do it by staring. Well, it didn't work on Mohammed, so let's forget about the staring. <laughs> I tried my best. He just turned his back on me. I remember hitting them so hard, I think around the stomach or the side. Yeah. And he looked at me and said, Is that all you got, sucker? <laughs> and I started wondering, how in the world am I... I wanted to raise my finger up and say, how do I get out of here? <laughs> but believe me, this, if there's anyone that's going to lay claim to the greatest, other than Joe Frazier, I'd have to put that tag on Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Mainly because he whipped me, you know. <laughs> You're a huge guy, though. You seem to be the biggest. A, a big one. This is a big one, isn't Whew. it? Whew. <laughs> my feet now, weren't big enough to keep me up on the canvas, though. <laughs> Joe, I've got a clip here I want you to watch. This is in a little pre-fight interview that you had. I'd be really grateful if we looked down at this little television screen here, and let's just see the kind of ways that you used to warm up. Sit down, Joe. Sit down, quick. Sit down, quick, Joe. Well, we're having a scene, as you can see, and it's hard to tell whether it's clowning or for real between the two fights. This kind of thing is been going on all along in terms of promotion of a fight, and this time it seems to be for real, because Joe Frazier is really angry. Well, <laughs> now, 
it was all within, let's say, fun, and sometimes, sometimes you probably get to, something just would hit the nerve just a little, and it wasn't Muhammad, his brother started the, let's say, the Karazma one, and he did, because the brother had no reason being there. So it was two guys against my one. So therefore, I got the first guy that was close to me, and it was him. Ali, were you real mad then? Scared. You. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a street fighter. Yeah. And he's strong. <laughs> nah, You're he's, not strong? Yeah, though. He's not a street fighter, but he mugged me in Africa. <laughs> that was a rumble in the jungle, wasn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look, I just want you three guys to stay here for the moment, because I'm going to bring on a man who's been the voice of boxing for over 40 years. At the end of a fight, he's beaten into the ring only by the towel. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Harry Carpenter. <laughs> If you can squeeze in with these hunky guys. I feel rather... slightly dwarfed. <laughs> now, Harry, do these guys bring back fond memories? Of course they do. You are surrounded by the three great heavyweight champions of my time. Without, I mean, in the 70s, these were the men. And Just they had the greatest fights I've ever seen. You've been doing this for 40 years. Just place them in history, these three guys. Well, let's start with George. George had one of the great right hands of all time. And one of his, I'm sorry to say, oh, one, oh, oh, one of his great victories I'm was over there. you. Was one of, <laughs> was one uppercut. Because, uh, yeah, that's right, in <laughs> Kingston, Jamaica, uppercut. which pretty well lifted you off your feet. Ooh, seven <laughs> down. <laughs> now then, if we go to 1971, you had a fight with Ali, which was one of the great fights of all time, oh. and you won it against yes. this man, and that, very few people did that. Yeah, well. And then, you, sir, in 1974, with George in Zaire, you produce your greatest, no. for me, your greatest ever performance when you came off the ropes. We saw it. Mm -hmm. yeah. on the, and you came off the ropes and you knocked George out. And so the three of you have all done it to each other in a way. And you're all great. <laughs> yeah. Talking about boxing. And you're all great champions. You're all great champions. And you all, I mean. Who invited him anyway? <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> We didn't do anything to each other. These men have been a part of my life, <laughs> and I'm proud to have been a part of their lives, I tell you. Harry, do you have a... Well, let me say, is this, is this a particularly favourite fight of yours? I want you to have a look at this and see if it's as popular with you as it is with me. Yeah, I guess what it might be. It's Cooper. <laughs> 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 I tell you what, you came back and won, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Now that was, the, I wouldn't say it's my favourite moment, but it was a great moment for British boxing yeah. mean, to put this man on the floor. But then he came back and he won in the next round, which shows you what a super fighter. I had some of the greatest times of my life with this man and with these gentlemen. I, I wish it could all happen again. No. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> You're making a comeback, right? Eh? Listen, Ali, what do you think of Mike Tyson? Awesome. He's powerful, he's strong, he's got a big punch. If he hits you, you're in trouble. Right. How would you have fared against him? Would you have whopped him? Stick, move, hit Shoot. him. Up. Yes. Time out. Right. After about round 10, Time move in. Are you listening to this, George? Because you're going to. And, mu and mug him. And mug him. 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 He can do it, too. Yeah, sure. And are you really going to do it? Huh? Are you going to have a crack at him? Oh, if I get the opportunity, I'll take advantage of it. And he's going to teach me some of his tricks, right. Mohammed. I'm sticking real close to Joe Frazier and Mohammed Ali because really, <laughs> these are the greatest fighters of all time. Yeah. You've got to be compared a Joe Frazier type or Mohammed Ali type. There are no George Foreman types. No. Yeah. Oh, oh, if I can imitate these guys on a certain night, I could whip anybody. Right. And to mix it all up, I may be considered a great. Why you been yeah. so nice? <laughs> <laughs> Harry, what do you think? What 
do you think of these three great guys here and Mike Tyson not here? What do you think of Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson is the best guy that's around today. Yeah. And that's all you can ever say in boxing. Yeah. It, I agree with people that. always want they always want to compare, you know, somebody from the past. Oh, could he have been it doesn't matter. All you have to be is the best in your own time. Tyson today is the best in his own time, and as far as I can see, there's there's really begging George's pardon. I mean there's not too many of people around I think could beat him. Yeah. But these gentlemen were the best in their time. Yes. And you, you were that's too. something they should all be proud of. You were too. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean I was? I still am. <laughs> <laughs> This, think, this, this was no doubt one of the most courteous reporters of all time. He would bring, it was a splendid opportunity when you'd be interviewed knowing that he was representing the country. Other yeah. people you wouldn't let in, but he was so nice and uh, such a gentleman. We'd all let him have private interviews. Whatever he wanted, we would give it to him. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they Now are. I want to punch him yeah, in his jaw. <laughs> I still sing. Uh, matter of fact, I just left uh, Atlantic City at the Claridge. Uh, I did like three days there. A friend of mine, Sonny Avalon, a young lady named Cheryl Adams. And uh, we did like a three days there, and it was very nice. It was uh, very good. And uh, I think they probably got some of my music running around somewhere around here. I probably had one that says, uh, Times seem to be hard. Don't forget how long it took you to start. Let's try it again. <laughs> yeah. that's all. With the guitar. There's going to be another fight around here, Mohammed. Try it again. Please don't talk to me. Whoa. Ali, do you still do poems? Do you still make up poems about things? I've made one for your show. You've made up one for the show? I love your show. I'm Mario style, but your pay is so cheap, don't call for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great. Great. So, Harry. Well, you can see what a pleasure it is to work with gentlemen like these. It because, must be fantastic. Uh, well, what kind of. It's do you... easy. That's the important thing. Do you have a chance to talk to them before they start fighting or is that pre-fight nerves and things I like that? I wouldn't them? go near a boxer on the night of the fight because no. that's their no. private thing and you don't get involved in that. But two or three days before, yes, and they, they'll work with you very, very happily. And, yeah. uh, I, I and George, just like to thank George for the very courteous things he said. He, well, George nice. is the sweetest guy in the world. He's all for the yes, most frightening, but he's still the sweetest man in the world. And I'll tell you what, he's going he's gonna to beat Mr. Cooney. Uh, you yeah. Can. You should tell him more that I'm going to whip Mike Tyson also. <laughs> yes, I think you are. That is a little harder. Hey, that's what you want but to do. George, three, three, <laughs> is, three <laughs> is better than one. <laughs> George, is it wise to go for Tyson? We hear such terrible things about this man. Is he you, heard ter you heard terrible things about Sonny Liston. That's true. Eight to one, Muhammad Ali was against Sonny Liston. Yeah. Everybody said, poor guy, don't hurt the little cute guy. Then next thing you know, Sonny Liston is getting face all swollen on the canvas, and the same oh, thing about no. George Foreman and Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Three to one, four to one. Yeah. If he get in But he tricked me. I could whip him, but he tricked me. <laughs> I could have whipped him. He pulled this rope of dope on me. <laughs> with, both of, with both of your hands I don't hands think that's right. Your back. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? Both of your hands tied behind your I think back. that was wrong right, right there. there. <laughs> I want to say that before the whole world. Muhammad <laughs> tricked me out of my title. Okay. <laughs> he had me, to, he laid on the rope, and I, like a dope, kept throwing punches. Yeah. Then I came, the back. when I got out of there, he knocked me out. Yep. In front of the whole world. I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hamlet, why did you do that to me? <laughs> Come on. Gentlemen, listen. You've just made this the most important day in my life, and thank you very much indeed for coming on the show. George Foreman, Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, and Harry Carter. The star from The Man from Uncle, 